Searching for the Truth at the End of the World. I am Alex Ansary, coming to you from Southern Colorado. It's an honor to be with you again. And it's been about five or six years since I first came to Colorado. And I was drawn here after a period of activism in Portland, Oregon, hosting the cable access TV show there. And it's been recently that I've been going deeper into spiritual texts. And I've been noticing various synchronicities in my own life, but also in other ways. And some things I can get literal with. Other things I'll be a little bit more metaphoric. You may be going through things yourself. Now, I don't really get on board like those moments where some of the YouTubers in the spiritual communities and astrology say, you know, we're having a total moment of enlightenment, 11, 11, 11, 11, you know, some of those things. But lately, there's been a trendy number of videos talking about the idea of spiritual portals opening and the idea of people awakening from within. Even if it's something that you do with your own thoughts, and people are thinking about it at the same time, awakening from within, also during the period in which we're going into winter, right? Is that not a good thing? And do we not make it a spiritual, holy, sacred time if we choose to put our attention on it? Now, there are other things that I think could also be sacred, spiritual, and or holy. Like looking for signs of spirit in rock or nature and being on the quest for truth as to how this relates to us. Not so much for fame and fortune, hits or things of that nature. Some people really don't know why we do what we do. Not everyone believes, right, that there is a point in dedicating one's life to the truth or seeking the truth speaking about the truth, and then they may have a certain level of things, right, that their soul may be tasked with, places where they may need to visit. And there could even be a past life relationship between them, the places that they visit. There's like a deeper way of looking at the world today and the things that are taking place, why people are led to certain areas, why people are propelled or repelled from other areas. There could be, for example, a convergence of several people in one area. And those that find themselves converging, maybe one from the west, maybe one from the east, oh, maybe one from the south, a little bit of code there, in one area. Maybe there's one from the north that's coming. Then once this awareness of the synchronicity takes place, and that they may not all three be aware of the others. There may only be one that's aware of the synchronicity. Others may be lost in ego, in the trio of what is. Whereas one of the three may see, maybe there's a reason why several have converged that have their own lifetime of experience and perhaps lifetimes. Who are we really? And is this a return? You see, because I have become aware, right, that there is a unique phenomenon that I've stumbled upon. And when you see a certain type of a synchronicity, where there's a number of different ways people may interpret that. And you may have things like this happen in your own life. Now, in this fallen world, we're brainwashed. We're brainwashed to think that truth is something that we wrestle over as if we're like literally at some sort of high school wrestling match with the gear and everything fighting over some sort of a trophy. That's my idea. Give it to me. That's my copyright. Whoa. Yeah, we're going to get to the truth about where God is with them through this behavior. And there's ways in which, I've talked about this before, it seems like the YouTube system through the hits and likes, the way the algorithm functions, but also what people focus on, it's not always on the best people or the best topics. There's a lot of golden nuggets that's buried within the labyrinth of YouTube because for whatever reason, it's a combination of ingredients, topics, 
key words that doesn't equate to mucha money, but it doesn't mean that it's not of value or relevance, like one person's lifetime of knowledge or information that they've shared with others. And there is ways to tailor this content, how it's titled, how the thumbs work, to make things more attractive to audience members or today's YouTube consumer in a highly competitive marketplace, if you will, where certain rules of thumb apply to get the most viewers. It's a matter of like catering to the market. There's nothing wrong with that. It can also be difficult for a person like me to conform to certain social expectations of how the information is to be delivered, titled, tagged, and the whole nine yards. There's a science to that. But I don't work with a team to help me with those particular sciences. I'm instead looking at potentially hidden solar sciences and other sciences of human biology that I believe the unseen forces have knowledge of. I've been speaking about these things for years. There's a number of reasons that brought me to Colorado, but also the off-grid way of life. We'll just start with the core one, talk about the life story, instead of talk about that. The core one being to get away from distractions. And other things that could be in the category of distractions is ways in which this world tries to punish us or judge us when we investigate certain things. We also have to find the strength to keep going and not allow ourselves to be weakened by the sense of being victimized, by the lack of validation. See, we live in a doggy dog world. That's the unfortunate thing. Like there's a part of me that wants to be a big brother to another up and coming truth speaker to help them prepare for the crap they may deal with in a couple of years. But that's if they're going all the way. But it's really important for someone that's going to be in that arena of doing that and breaking outside the matrix to not go about copying a particular mold or looking at it as a way to get in on the niche and a, like money is a means to an end. So if it helps in the end, that person in revealing secrets, then so be it. As long as that money is used for the highest good and it keeps the momentum moving. That's just a perspective on it. There, there's multiple perspectives that there can be on money and a proper way to use it and a proper way for the energy to go back into what is that we do. So, you know, I, I know that I've faced a lot of challenges. I've also been gifted with various synchronicities that have, that have been there for me. Times in which there was a certain level of help from the audience or times in which certain things worked out. Uh, also cycles within cycles, cycles in which, you know, it was a time for me to speak the truth to a specific population in Oregon. That would be on Portland cable access and to have on all those many, many guests that I had on in those earlier days. And those were more welcoming days. It seemed at times, at times it seemed. Also people like the idea though, of the person that they liked in the media or on TV if it was on cable access, somehow fighting the good fight for them so they didn't have to. That psychological dynamic is there as well. When the reality is, no matter how big somebody is on the internet or on YouTube, doesn't take nothing but a button to remove that platform. And then once that's gone or something else, the question is, right, has that person really been on the path to truth? as they had their YouTube platform. Would those truths that they share on YouTube or shared on YouTube be worthy of also be putting into a book or keeping for 100 years or sharing in 100 years? You know, looking at like what it is that we're doing now and the things that we're saying now and if it's gonna have relevance in 20 years, 50 years, 100 years, or if it's more commercialism and distraction and see, and I don't, I don't place particular malice on a human who's nothing more than a human, which is imperfect. And that would be our fellow brothers and sisters. I'm trying to show more patience as time goes on 
and a more spiritual understanding of our fallen state, a sense of forgiveness, a sense of compassion, a sense of understanding, including the understanding to find the words that need to be said to people that are still suffering. And there are still so many people that are suffering because they have no truth in their lives. And that could be something that could be highly toxic for some people, just like, you know, for some people at a certain age without having a good parent in their life. The absence of truth and the abundance of disinformation and propaganda can be highly toxic. Now, the highly competitive nature, right, is that people are like fighting in some wrestling match for a, a trophy uh, over, over the truth. That is a contaminating energy. And others can notice the synchronicity of a number of different people, right, that may be talking about the same thing or in a certain area or whatnot. I think the wisest thing is be, well, for the observer to see the truth perhaps in all of what they're saying instead of right for the archetype mind the slave mind to come in and go everyone must unify then under one belief system over one plan one government one church one this one that one mono this so there's a level of the programming of the one ruler number one the ranking the hierarchy which is built into our world right that limits us from being in our full truth. Or another way I'll put it, right, the full strength of our magnetic field. I've seen ways in which I was just simply sharing my own truth. And there could be ways in which someone would respond to that truth and go, yeah, well, huh, someone else has more truth than you over here. Ha, ha, ha. That's a fallen state world level of consciousness. The higher word level of consciousness would be go, oh, wow, that's truth. That's pretty cool. Not a lot of people with truth in that region. What would be the common theme here? And then maybe look at a little deeper. What is the story behind these unique humans? Very few of them, I might say, that may be drawn to certain areas at certain times with a rare level of knowledge, either of the sun, the archons, or something else. See, I, be I become aware of a synchronicity right now, and I know that I've been involved in this stuff for well over 10 years, and I've covered a lot of the stuff already. All my life, I've just wanted to feel like I'm a part of a normal community for the good work that I've done, and for not to feel like it's about competition or coming under other people's command. And a lot of the alternative media has been that. Who knows, maybe my soul remembers a time and a place where it wasn't so competitive, and I'm longing for that. Maybe there's something in the genetic memory also, right, that I'm tapping into. There, there's a lot of talk about that lately, and I was kind of referencing that, and not really a dream, but something coming to me from within, within my own knowledge that spoke Vishnu to me. And then from there, with Thoth being dropped in my lap, from Bill, days after Vishnu came to me in a dream, I'm noticing a synchronicity and I'm going, now what is this other thing going on over here that I'm noticing with someone else's investigations and, you know, readings of this text? And I'm just like, like feeling my own magnetism coming upon, right, these different stories and mythos. And then I see like the lower world and the lower Alex self in, in this fallen world, um, we're, we're almost led to be stuck in a sense of ego. But if we're higher, um, if we're linked in enough, we can bring ourselves up to see the greater reality of the synchronicity. And that is there could be clues in which multiple people are looking in the same direction at the same time, asking some of the same questions. And people may be different. Now, how do we look at that on a larger scale in terms of like the planet? And on the planetary level, we can see periods in which there's synchronicities and people are looking at certain things at the same time. And the lower world part 
and I've seen extreme versions of that. Somebody could say, well, I was here first, or I discovered this first. Well, that person ripped this off for me, and, I, and I've heard that from others. But already knowing before about the hundredth monkey syndrome, and also believing that the Creator may be calling those to certain areas that have the inner ability to, to hear. Or, or, or to be to be able to follow the call. So we're living now in a time in which there's a lot of knowledge that's boom just coming upon the internet. And it takes great perseverance to keep coming up with, of course, more videos because that takes energy. But for me, it's a matter of discipline to steer it back to the core truths that I feel are the core truths and not to get stuck into a clickbait modality, which is not my nature, but it is the nature of some. And it is the way that some people have found a way to pay their bills. And we could see this on YouTube. We could see what's recommended. We could see what people gravitate to. And so the lower world of reward versus punishment on the economic level can be a very challenging thing for the truth speaker to contend with when they're suffering extremely on a monetary level. Maybe we don't really know why some people are able to create that level of abundancy for themselves where others can't. I could see examples where some channels where there is hundreds of thousands of views per video, these are not highly skilled or highly competent in some cases or compassionate individuals, nor are we seeing that reflected in the comment section. In some cases, we see some people, you know, and I'm not mentioning names, there's one channel where a guy is, he's going to war with his trolls, I guess, but his trolls, I guess, they're well, they're challenging his idea. He's saying he's literally a reincarnation of Jesus. We'll just leave it at that. So these videos are going on and on, and it's becoming like a popular buzz because people are feeding on that madness, and they're almost talking in code, and there's different things being said, and I'm barely able to follow it just out of sheer entertainment, you know, trying to follow the comment section combined with what's being said in the video, and, and like, wow, these people are kind of sharing this madness. That's the thing that's scary when I look at this because there's so much madness on YouTube and parallel realities. That's what I'll call it. And the group think to where there can all these, there could be all these religions and belief systems and various views and how it's all. And I don't think that we all should come under one. And I believe in the freedom for there to be, I, I guess this, this, all this, the anarchy of, of information. Because within that, the truth is allowed, it is accessible, it will grow in some way, but it is like covered by all of this noise. And as it is today, we are in the age in which the truth is in plain sight. And there may be a truth that's in plain sight on an individual YouTube channel like this one, and a truth for you. And you may need to sift through several of my videos to find the truth for you. And as it is, you know, in the larger world, in a needle in a haystack, because there could be the ultimate truth that we're looking for that's more valuable than the other truths. <clears throat> so I'm taking a look at this, and YouTube has a lot of very interesting perspectives. And there is a level of interference also on this medium to where it's like topics that are there that people are naturally going to gravitate to and click on but it's like an inverted distorted explanation of what is and once one finds something that seems truthful the next stage for a lot of people then is going through well then can i trust this youtuber to be on the right path in their heart. At least that's what I ask. That's what I ask before I then start absorbing and absorbing somebody else's information. Because from my own perspective, 
And after, you know, listening to stuff for years and years, and I still do, I attempt to use a bit of discernment if I'm going to be listening to someone else's material. But there's also this almost unspoken rule of mutual respect amongst the truth speakers. Somebody could say to another, hey, have you heard about such and such? And they may not realize, right? There could be a imbalance in the suggestions. There could be like an effort or a need for the people that are becoming aware of the synchronicity to actually maybe talk to the larger YouTuber or let the larger YouTuber know about the synchronicities, that there is other information in their sphere of influence around them. And it may send them down the rabbit hole. And it's like, I'm, I'm having these things come to me that are, we can have like lower parts of ourselves that keep us divided. But if we were activated with our higher self, a couple people with their individual, like, like special piece of knowledge can almost like activate something. As it is with the world, if the world was not so divided. And as it is with the true romantic sacred union between man and woman and the powerful magic that that creates when two are in embrace. And for those that have felt that, even as much as a passionate hug with someone, the type of field that that seems to create at the same time when you really like that field and that field is broken up and you don't have that, the feeling without that, the contrast, the duality. I also want to thank David Smith, who lives in Oregon, for messaging me, saying that the recent video regarding the rocks really struck him here, you know, in the heart, in the consciousness, and he's been pretty much musing upon the images ever since, and so have I. You know, I think that it's unfortunate that we have so many people that don't realize that elements of some of the memes that are out there, like the flat earth, may be there to confuse us because ultimately we should be asking about our ancient origins. We should be looking at the geological record. We should be looking at the solar cycles. We should be looking at these tangible things. But we have all this noise and we don't have... Even though we have a lot of conspiracy theorists, we don't have people really realizing that YouTube plays a role in almost trying to lead people in some of these directions. I'm not for censorship, and I realize that the algorithm in a big way is dictated by human interest. But still, I can still see YouTube to this day like promoting flat earth videos. But when it comes to like actual things, when it comes to things that are a little bit more tangible, those are things that someone almost needs to know where to look. So this is what I've been thinking about tonight. There could be a period in which in the years to come, there are many people that are converging 